Bristol had Saracens in a lot of trouble over the weekend, but another one slipped through their fingers. Yeah, it's not good for Bristol at the minute. They've lost their last five games, but they were much improved at the weekend. Um, Ibatoye, my God. Quick, powerful, carries the ball like it's a Satsuma. Like, just ridiculous. And listen, you know, Bristol were a lot better. They're in a rut, as a couple of other clubs are as well. And we'll get onto that later. Um, and actually, it's a massive game this weekend. Bristol against Gloucester. Not only because I'm doing it on TNT Sports, but... Because whoever loses that game is probably out of the top four race in this shortened season. Um, and throw it out there. You look at what Bristol have done over the last couple of years with what Pat's been spending, and we spoke about it on him. He signed a seven-year deal. Is he under pressure, Jim? Oh, cheers, Andy. <laughs> cheers, mate. <laughs> you said he was under pressure yeah, last he is. week. I think he is. I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone in the Premiership's under pressure at the minute. Not even George Skivington. And, and I know, and I say that not even George Skivington because Gloucester have been so poor. We can get onto that as well. But I think the way things are financially in the Prem, I don't think anyone. But if any what club have got the money to change it up, it would be a club like Bristol. And you don't know what the agreement is with Pat Lamott. But with the money and the opportunity he's had with that team, and again, I've kind of flip-flopped a little bit on Bristol because I've already looked at their headline players that they've had over the last couple of years. Yeah. Sonny Ravrandra, Charles Piertau, for example. Genji Sonny back, Piertau. Yeah. They've brought Genji back. Carl Sinclair. Actually, you look at the makeup of their squad, should they be doing better? Yes. There's a, Yeah, well, the, the answer is yes. But if you take away them players which we now have to because they're not there the likes of Semi Ramrandra and Piatau, then where are they as a squad compared to Saracens? And that's based on this weekend. Faz didn't bring his kicking boots, so if he did, then it would have looked very different. But the way that Bristol play, the club, can I see them getting rid of Pat Lamb? They would be maybe the only club where they would make changes because they haven't had huge amounts of success and there's been a few question marks over Pat Lamb. But I like Pat Lamb. I yeah. like Bristol as well. Yeah. I think we need a good Bristol team. And they were definitely going in the right direction, but they've definitely fallen off over the last 18 months. Do you know what it boils back to? It goes back to when they lost that semi-final against Quinns. I think they finished top of the league. Mm. Uh, lost that semi-final when they were 28 nil up or whatever it was. They haven't recovered from that. And as much as you deny it, there's clearly a, a bit of a mental scar there. And off the back of it, there's got to be pressure on Pat Lamb because if you're Steve Lansdowne and he has shelled out a lot of money, you're a businessman. And obviously a lot of clubs now are posting their financials on how they're doing. And yeah, I agree with Jim. You know, money's tight, so it depends on how the contract's are written. But he's a businessman, a very successful businessman. And whatever you're investing in, you want return on investment. And he's not seeing it at the minute. Um you know, it was the big thing about getting them into the Prem and then making them competitive. And then they made the playoffs and it's been down a level since. So ever since he signed that seven-year deal. But I, I do like Pat Lamb. Um, you know, there is there is issues there in terms of, you know, maybe squad depth, a couple of injuries. Uh, but the reality of it is, if you're at the supposed richest club in the country with an owner that's one of the richest guys, then you've got to be in the top four. Um, and that's, you know, if they don't make it this year, then you've got to ask the question. So that's what we do. We ask questions and Jim says, get Pat Lamb out. Why are you saying that, Jim? Oh, You're Jim. Horrible. No, I'm not. No, I'm saying that Bristol will be one of the most sought after club for coaches. And you think of the All Blacks coaches, for example, that are now out of a job. I know Dave Rennie's coaching in Japan as well. But I think if you were to look at the Prem you wanted to get in, Bristol would be high up the list of a team that any coach probably would want to coach. But on Saris. They play a quality brand of rugby now. You know, we've seen the evolution, and we said it last week, it's being pushed by Farrell. Jim said it, he's left his kicking boots at home. Can you imagine the conversations? Hey, Faz, you've missed six out of eight. Let's give someone else a go. Can you imagine? No one had. I saw Elliot Daly's interview after the game. Someone asked him, oh, did you ever, you know, go over to Faz and say, do you want me to take over? And he was just like, no, no, no. I can't <laughs> add any value to that conversation. <laughs> so, uh, but Faz was good, like, scored a try. Um, they got a bit of luck, Saris, because it was the, the the pace the game was played at was hectic. It was a brilliant game. Had a bit of luck. Obviously, there was a goal line dropout at Faz's 
caught and then he's gone to ping a drop goal over because he's left his goal kicking boots at home. He was thinking I'll get a drop goal instead um, to make up for it. That gets charged down. It was 29-24 and you know the ball fell very kindly for them into the Theo McFarlane's hands and a phase later Tom Willis scores um, to basically put the game to bed but um, yeah I mean Sarah's a class powerful the rugby they play now the layers of attack um, it must be poles apart from when Jim played because decoy runners handling the pod system balls out the back the shape the width they put on it the high energy high tempo game um, they're class to watch and you know everyone's favourites I think in terms of who's probably going to win the title. And they're playing up to it. They're great. Good to watch. A marrow. Oh, my marrow. You, you can see when someone's out of contract, can't you? Because the boy is on fire. He is on fire. And it's good to see from a rugby perspective and also if you're an England fan as well. Because marrow has been operating at 60%, yet yeah, he's probably been the second, third name on the team sheet. So to get him back up to that level again, whatever his motivational driver is... Is huge for Saracens, of course, but huge for England as well, going into the Six Nations. Could that be the tipping point if he does go to France for selecting overseas players? Well, I don't think he'll sign for someone else unless he's got assurances that something would change. And it comes down to a decision. What is the difference financially? Um, and careers are short. What's Mara now? 29? 28, it's crazy 29? crazy how fast time goes, yeah. It'll be 28, 29. Yeah. So in reality, he could only have three or four or five years left and you have to if, if a million euros get stuck in front of your nose for three years at Leon, which is what I've heard um, you have to look at it seriously and then work out what your drivers are is it money is it the fact that at the minute he can't go to play in France and play for England is that law going to change is there going to be an Atoji law or a 50 cap law or something like that that changes because as we've seen there's no Prem games now during the Six Nations the seasons you're hoping are going to come to a point where there's no rugby during international windows in the Prem uh, or the top 14 or whatever. And a lot of it comes down to that release. A lot of it comes down to his desire. Does he want to go to the next World Cup? Does he want to go on a Lions tour? And if you sign for Lyon or whoever in France at the end of this season on a million euros or whatever it is, what's jeopardising that in terms of your England career and possible British and Irish Lions tour. So Could you big, still go on the Lions if he was... Yeah, you can. You can go on the Lions tour, but it makes it significantly harder mm. if you're not playing international rugby. Because, you know, in this day and age, yes, they used to do it previously on the old school tours. They'll take a non-capped player and there's cases where boys have not been playing international rugby yet, still got picked. The game's moved on very fast. And if you're not playing, we, we saw the difference in the World Cup between test match animals, test match level matches, and then we're back in the league system now. It's a huge difference. So, um, yeah, it makes it harder for him. But, of course, he could play for the Lions. Um, but, again, you, you give up your opportunity to play for England as it stands. And we don't know in the background whether Steve's working exceptionally hard to change that um, at the RFU level, if it's something that's going to be written into an agreement with the, the new professional game agreement that's going on. Um, so I'm, I'm presuming Marrow's summing all these things up in his own mind and at some point you've got to make a decision. Saracens have made their decision that Faz is going to be their marquee player um, and here's a contract that we can afford you on under the salary cap. But, you know, he's got big decisions to make because at the minute he's a very valuable commodity to any team, especially playing the way he is. And to between him and Faz, they would be the only two players that would move that Atoji or Farrell or the Gitto law yeah. in that England squad. Yeah. They're the only two players that will move that dial. So I'd like it to see it be moved. I think it just opens up the opportunities to have Harry Arundel. Let's talk of him at Bath potentially that are interested. Well, Henry can the, play in the Six in Nations. The Henry Arundel can play in the Six Nations Why? because there's a there's a special clause around extenuating circumstances. And so Jack Willis was allowed to play last year because Wasp went bust. He signed a deal with Toulouse. And he's re-signed with Toulouse. So now Jack Willis can't play because he chose to then stay in France. Um, uh, because but Henry, Henry Arundel, because London Irish went folded. bust, yeah, okay. he signed with Racing. And he can play in the Six Nations. Um and How so, weird is that? Yeah. The fact that like Jack could have just said I've signed there for five years, maybe. 
Well, when Wasp went under, like it could have been like, oh, there's a five year deal there, maybe. Yeah. And then, oh, but then I oh, suppose you've okay. got to prove it. Yeah, I'll prove it. Um, but also. But it's ridiculous. Yeah. But then the like, where, take, take, with the take, premise now. Yeah, take Joe Marchant. Joe Marchant signed for Stade Francais at the end of last season. And he signed that deal when Eddie Jones was in charge because Eddie Jones told him, I ain't going to pick you. So he's taken a decent deal at Stade Francais. Obviously, Eddie gets the sack. Steve Borthwick comes in. Joe Marchant was brilliant at the World Cup. Uh, but he's not available in the Six Nations because he signed for Stade Francais off his own back, leaving Harlequins. It wasn't a case of he just something big and bad happened, like a club going bust where you've got no contract, and that's one of your only options. So, yeah, it's a, it's a funny place to be in. But Henry Arundel scores more tries for, for Racing this weekend. Hell of a finish. Pick him, Steve. I did speak to one player. We're going a bit England heavy already. Oh that said, Steve Borthwick didn't ever watch the top 14 last year and it was like what you've got players there that you can pick because there was a couple um, and a certain individual told me uh, Richard Cockrell that Steve didn't even know um, <laughs> that players were playing in the top 14 that no. were available for England yeah, yeah. really? Yeah. so Steve was like you need to watch a certain Zach Mercer you need to watch a certain Jack Willis now and he started watching top 14 rugby so there we go hope he's watching hi Steve Talking to Zach Mercer. Yes. Do you reckon there's a re slight regret there going to well, Gloucester? Well, and no, I feel like saying this because I love Gloucester. Montpellier are bottom of the league, mate. They've, they've played eight losses. Tell the money that, though. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. But <laughs> yeah. tell the money that. I know he's marquee at Gloucester, but Montpellier, you think, will turn it around. But do you think there's a slight regret? Well, I mean. Or not, unless he gets picked for England again, which. Well, that's the thing. His driver was to come back to going, play for you England. Can't see it. Yeah, his driver was to come back to play for England, wasn't it? Um, and you respect that. He's turned more money down because he wants to come back and play for England. Uh, and there wasn't an avenue for him to go back to Bath, his old club. So, yeah, just looking at it now, he's, you know, he started the season pretty well. I think he made the most carries in round one. And then he's obviously picked up a knock. He's out for a while. Um, and we'll see when he gets back. But he's got to live in the moment, Jim, and get, try and get better week on week. And I'm sure he's doing that at Gloucester right now. Five straight defeats now for Gloucester. It's not looking good for them, is it? No, it's not. No. And you've got to call it how it is. <sighs> Who did you want to win actually, first, Jim? Who did you want to win? You know what? Me and Ravo, me and the Slug were talking about this because... The Slug's left the building, though. Slug's left the building. Well, there you go. So if Slug was still at Gloucester, he'd be like, I'm Gloucester till I die, even though deep down I know he's Leicester till he dies. But So we were talking about that, like who does Slate support? Because it's the Ed Slater Cup. We know that Slate now lives in Gloucester. And I think there's a part, and I didn't, Bravo, I'm not going to quote you on this, but he mentioned that he thinks deep down that Slates is still Leicester till he dies, even though he got traded. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I don't know whether you've got this, because we played there during the glory days with the legends, and Bravo's exactly the same. I just think once you're Leicester, you're Leicester till you die. There, I don't think there's many people or many ex-players that, are not lesser till they die. Yeah. I don't know how you are, yeah. but well, you are, because you've got, you've got the Andy Good suite. So in answer to your question, I love Gloucester. I've got some great mates there still. But I think, gun to my head, I reckon, three, two, one, I'm going Leicester. Leicester. Yes. So but did you, I think they'd win? Skips, I was though. unsure. I was Gloucester Skips. I was, <laughs> 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 I was Leicester Skips as well. Monday Night Football you were, yeah. But we had the best time ever. Yeah, we did. We had the best time ever. My memories there as a young lad are just, they make me smile from ear to ear. I don't talk about them too loudly in front of the messes, but I <laughs> just keep it. Do you ever drive wraps. around? Right, I do this a bit, right? You drive around in the car because you do a bit of driving on your own. And sometimes a memory comes into your head and you just have a, a big old chuckle to yourself. Playing glory days. Wow, mate. And I think mm. back to some of the stories and Jim's involved in a fair few of them. You must have a catalogue of stories. That yes. When you're feeling a bit down or you're like on board or whatever, just go through the memory bank and a lot of stuff you couldn't even talk about or do now, but how funny was those days? Unreal, unreal. And that's what Ray was saying about Slates going to go and see him and like they just go through the archives of stories. Yeah. Like they just start telling stories, which you have. Anyone who's been to Leicester just have a million stories to tell, don't they? It's just that kind of place. I don't know how... Loose it is now. I'm sure it's very, very, well, I know it's very, very different. But yeah, so for that game, there was a lot more on it, a lot more yeah. emotion. Slates is best mates with Fraser Balmain. 
tight head prop. How old are Lewis Ludlow as well. Unbelievable. So the, there's an emotional driver for the Gloucester players because everything that happened around Ed Slater happened while he was at Gloucester. He was skipper. So a high emotion game, and I kind of feel that it might have got the better of Gloucester, but then it comes down to now, and we know this, and you know this looking at other teams and tournaments, emotion before could take you a long way in rugby, and it could take you all the way in some big matches, but now the game is so much more than that, yeah. isn't it? I reckon emotion is maybe half, whereas before, I'd say it was 80%. And you do wonder whether that emotional driver going into the game got the better of Gloucester, Slates' his kids coming out with the Ed Slater Cup and everything around that. The captain, Ludd's as well. But I don't think it was. I think it just comes down to quality. Yeah. And I just think, I look at the Gloucester squad, and yes, I know there's a few injuries in that. And then I look at the Leicester squad. They're just better. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. And I watched Gloucester. I didn't watch it thoroughly, but I watched it enough to see how many errors they've got in their game. And for Leicester to get a bonus point, and especially how they did at the end of the game with a charge down kick, and you just saw the energy sapped out of Gloucester, you wonder how this season's going to look for them. They fell off last season. I can't see where it gets better for them this season. No Billy Twelve Trees. He's now gone to the big one, Ealing Trailblazers. So there's some big characters in that team that are not there anymore but when you skip it by someone like Lewis Ludlow you know that they've got that dog they've got that yeah. see you next Tuesday in that squad but he's, Leicester he's an good. inspiration isn't he yeah Mate, he's, he's a proper Gloucester man through and through they've yeah. got players like that in the squad still yeah. they have but I look at their team Goody and I'm not going to name the players because I'd be really harsh to do that but some of the guys over the last couple of years who were their best players They've had injuries, like they're aging athletes. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm looking at, you've got, it'd be so easy for me to go from one to 15 and actually name drop the players. And in your mind, you'd be like, yeah, you're right. Played a lot of rugby. Is on the wrong side of, not the wrong side of 30 now. They're over 30 years old. They've got a lot of miles on the tank. The experience in key positions as well. The fact that they've not got their marquee playing. There's a few things that you could say around that, but it's an interesting time for all the clubs like we've said. But Gloucester, I want them to do well. Hey, I've got my Christmas party on December 19th down there with the Gloucester lads. So you going? Hopefully, turn, well, if they turn it around before then, I, <laughs> I've got to, haven't I? Yeah. But how's that going to be? Well, it's not with the old boys, but yeah. quality club. Yeah. But again, you look at Leicester, question Andre Pollard two years ago. What are you on about? Unbelievable. I know. Idiot. Absolute idiot. <laughs> and that's the big thing. Like, that is yeah. the big thing. So where Gloucester, as you just spoke about, have been struggling a bit with injuries, marquee player not there, injured and all this stuff. The influx of the internationals back to Leicester and they had a tough start. Um, you, know, you mentioned Pollard then, world class, controlling the game. And it wasn't a sparkling Leicester performance in attack, but they're slowly getting better. Um, they're feeling more comfortable. You've got to remember that all the changes that Leicester have had. And I think Andre said it after the game in the interview, right? And I loved it because he... He was saying, look, Dan McKellar's come in, changed the coach, he's just changing the way he wants us to play more. Basically saying that, that all they used to do was kick and chase under Steve Borthwick and Wiggy a little bit last year. Um, but it, it takes time with that. And you bring in Jasper Visa, who carries to the cow sheds and back week in, week out. I think he's won top ball carrier in the Prem for the last three weeks. Really? In each game. I think he made 20-odd carries this weekend. Um, he's come back in. Andre Pollard, two World Cup winners. Montoya's back. I mean, it looked like Jim Hamilton was throwing the line out one time. Did you see that line out? <laughs> He'll never throw a worse line out in his life. But just you, the presence of like those three, Ben Young's four, Freddie Stewart had a worldie of a game, I thought, at fullback. Really opened his legs out, made 154 metres, ball in hand. You, you add in that stardust for Leicester coming off the back of a World Cup and you know, Andre Pollard and Jasper Visa have won a World Cup. There's frustrations from Ben Youngs. Montoya will be a bit frustrated about how, you know, they ended up, they did really well Argentina, but, you know, they got absolutely hosed in the semi-final and then lost to England. So there's different drivers from those boys. Um, and, and they've had some brilliant players come back into the squad. So Leicester uh, got on a roll over the last two weeks, beat Northampton. It's momentum, isn't it? Like there's no momentum with Gloucester at the minute, but if they go to Bristol this weekend and win, that changes everything. So, Leicester were good. I love Catter. It, it, it comes off the bench. 
But I'd start him at 12 every day of the week. Um, he was at Exeter last year. I, I just love, I, I, look, I look at a Tongan boy and or a Samoan boy or a Fijian, mainly Tongans and Samoans. But do you know what I love? Is they always have their hair perfectly done for the game. They have the, 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 the dreads done and whatever it is, the corns or whatever it is. And then I remember going back to speaking about the Tuolangis and I spoke to Henry Tuolangi once and he's had his hair done before a game. I said, Henry, how long does it take to do your hair? He's like, bro, six hours. Six hours. Six hours sat doing all his hair properly where they go into a, a proper barber's and get it all threaded and corned up. Or I don't even know the terminology, but all corned I'm thinking up. is looking at Kata going, <laughs> he's had six hours in a chair and he's coming out and he's running over people with his quads. So um, Leicester is starting to build momentum and you know Dan McKellar's saying those sort of things around him, improving um, and becoming more comfortable. And Andre Pollard said it. The last thing always to layer on is attacker, but they're getting more comfy in how the identity of the team is being found. And there's always the old school. Dan Cole comes on and the scrum was under pressure, wasn't it? Like Fraser Balmain scrummaged ridiculously well for a 43-year-old man. Um, and in the first half, I'd say that Gloucester had the upper hand at scrum time. Uh, and then you bring big old Coley on and uh, things change. And so they've got a good balance at the minute, Leicester. Uh, they play Newcastle this weekend, which will be 60 points. Sorry, Rob. Sorry, Newcastle, my old club. But um, it was, you know, it wasn't a do or die game for both teams, but we're now seven games into the Prem and it's an 18 game season. So as weeks go by, if you don't get a win, you're going to be fucked. And Leicester have got to continue that momentum. And Gloucester, it's do or die this weekend for Gloucester and Bristol, I think. There was plenty of ambition to score tries on the weekend between Saints and Quinns, wasn't there? Friday Night Lights. Mm. And me and you were getting a bit of stick on social media, weren't we, Jim? Oh, what's happened? I've, yeah. Well, there's some I, I've not seen that. Which bit? Going on about oh, war. 1v2, Sale versus Bath should be on the box. I'm like... That oh, I saw fault. that. You guys were copying it. I blame Jim. Hey, boy, hey my fault. World Rugby, well, just blame something on something. Yeah, on blame someone. me. Just email me. That's what everyone else is doing. <laughs> um, Don't give my email address out. Not hard to find, though. Yeah. But uh, it was, yeah, it was end-to-end -end stuff. You know, two teams that love chucking the ball around. And the reality of that Friday night game. How good the Quins look without Joe Marler, Jim? What do you mean, retire him now? Oh, goody. Where was he? Well, he's on OnlyFans now, so he's busy <laughs> doing that. <laughs> yeah, banter. Yeah, great. Um, I'm on OnlyFans. But oh, it was great. an exciting game. And uh, Northampton... You know, we say it every week. They are bloody exciting to watch. I thought Hendy at fullback. I met his mum the other day, Hendy. Um, uh, hang on, hang on. Not in that way, James. She was in the Andy Gooch no, suite at Leicester. Not in what way? Not in well, I don't what know way? what you're thinking. You're like, hang on, hang well, on. Yeah, um, just, just lovely woman. Actually, thought. she was in the Andy Gooch suite before the Northampton game, and uh, I went over and said to over the mic, "Hope Northampton get absolutely smashed today." But George Hendy plays exceptionally well because his mum's in the room. Uh, How so, did that interaction come about? Did she come up to you and just say, Andy oh, Gooch, Ruby Someone had a word in my ear that Mrs. Hendy, as I called her, was polite. Oh, okay. Um, right. Was so in the room. P's and Q's. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's like, a hell of a big ginger unit, isn't he? Um, why, 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 is ginger, why is ginger? Why does that have to be? Descriptive, come James. Uh, okay, fine. Okay, I've got that's a fine. Beard. I'm asking. Yeah, I, I, yeah but I'm, okay, that's fine. Was well, he a ginger or <laughs> not? A, well, yeah, but it's not like... Well, people do say, here comes the big, dark and handsome hunk with a full head of hair when no, I come don't. over. To you? No, they don't. No, <laughs> not to me, no. No. I hear them saying it. It's not about me. But yeah, I mean, it was a brilliant game, I thought. Perfect Friday night football. Two teams on a brilliant pitch. You look at that Franklin's Garden surface, it's been the best rugby pitch in the Prem for years. Um, offloading galore. Furbank at 10. My goodness. How I never have seen him as a 10, really, until now. I know we were all over Finn Smith the other week. I did not know George Furbank could bang like yeah. that. Did you know he could bang like that? I didn't know he could bang like that, but I knew he was a very good player, whether it's fullback or 10. Yeah. Because I spoke to Vesti a couple of times about him. I'm like, mate, like, I always uh, didn't understand. James Grayson, right, who's just been released to go to Japan. I always thought James Grayson was a really good fly half option for them, but he couldn't get a game. And Sam Vestia, so I messaged him, he's like, mate, Furbank can play at 10. 
as good as anyone else. And obviously they fought, they signed Finn Smith from Worcester after Worcester went belly up. Um, and Finn's done a great job. He's out injured this week. And when they released James Grayson, I was like, either fair play for releasing him because he's not getting enough game time. But then they must have decent other backup options. And George Furbank proved that not only is he a good looking boy, he's got a hell of a moustache. Great boy can bang. He's got Esther Hazen run that. And now Esther Hazen's probably the biggest 12 in the world at the minute. And he's banging him. Proper banging, banging him. him. As in not just once or yeah. twice, he is spot blitzing, banging him. Yeah. He's chopping him. I, I'm going big on George Furbank because I was watching, I was like, this kid is not only brave, technically very, very sound as well, yeah. and looks a million dollars. Yeah, mm. I met his granddad once, actually, at a dinner. Good bloke. There you go. You're missing this everyone at these dinners. Maybe, the maybe I need to start doing dinners. Yeah. Does he? Yeah. The great um, Furbank. But yeah, for, uh, he, the offload for Cole's try was class. Um, it was, yeah, Slight Home on the wing. And I watched Slight Home plays just like his dad, runs just like his I dad. I can't, on that, I can't get Slight Home out of my head because of the Joe Lomu game. <laughs> I was just <laughs> thinking just the, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's Slight it. Home. Slight Home, I can't, I'm sorry, Ollie, the son of the great, what's his dad's name? John. The great John Slighthome. Yeah. Sorry, Ollie. There's only one. And that I'm going to blame the Jonah Lomu rugby game for that. As good that as you one. might be, are you skinning people on the wing on Jonah Lomu? You're not because you weren't born. <laughs> Give it slight and press the button, that, the extra speed bit. And, mm. yeah, Double go. tip. That's a huge Gary Owen. Yeah. But the, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he scores two. I thought um, you always question Saints defence and Matavesi makes 20 tackles. A hell of an effort. Uh, but Quinns will be frustrated. They gave up two cheap tries. And in a tight game like that against a team that loves to score tries, two cheap tries, two errors, one line out overthrown. Um, and Ludlam ends up scoring uh, in the first half. And then just before half time, Danny Kerr gets absolutely mugged and pickpocketed by Alex Mitchell. Ball sort of shoots out the scrum. He does well to score that. So they gave up two tries. That's what will frustrate Quinns. Uh, but they played some pretty good stuff as well at times. Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod. <laughs>